All right. So um, since you have to implement Dijkstra's in your P4, I wanted to make a separate video just to be sure that you had the details of the pseudocode we discussed in lecture. So remember that Dijkstra's is technically a modification of the BFS code, where we are going to take in a graph. This is that theoretical graph object. Um, it's mostly pseudocode. You won't actually write, have that sort of graph object. And then you're gonna take in the starting vertex. Then we need a set of collections in order to make this work. So the first is that literal set that was originally introduced in BFS so that we can keep track of the vertices we've already been to. We're gonna call that known. Then we are gonna have two separate maps one called edge two that is going to per vertex store the previous vertex in the shortest path to that given vertex. So each vertex has exactly one edge associated with it. And then you sort of trail through that set of back pointers, we call them to reconstruct the shortest path. And then we have a third collection, another map called dis2 that is gonna store for every vertex, the given shortest distance to that vertex. Now, originally we're gonna do this thing where we need to sort of like set the initial distances for each of the vertices so that we can get into our loop and do some comparisons. Um, and so the very first time we encounter a vertex, we're going to be comparing it we know that'll be the shortest path we've found so far. And so we need to compare it against something that we know any given path will sort of be shorter than, which is why we use the infinity. So we're going to initially fill up the disk two map with all nodes mapped to infinity, just so that we have like a default, the first time we find any given distance, it will replace this infinity. But we'll set the start vertex at zero because the distance from source to source is zero. Then we've got our while loop, and this is the same while loop from BFS. We're just going to loop while there are vertices left to visit, essentially. And then we are going to, we have this line here, let you be the closest unknown vertex. In BFS and DFS, it was just whatever vertex came next in that collection you know, of perimeter is what we called it in those contexts. Um, so we pull out the next thing to visit, we mark it as known, we loop over all of the edge coming edges coming off of that given vertex. We find the old distance, meaning the distance that is already stored in the map of that vertex on the other side of that edge. So we're looping over all the edges, but we're looking at the distances currently stored for each of the vertices that are on the other side of the edges that are coming off of the node we're currently working with. So we're gonna compare the one that, the distance that's currently stored in the map to that distance plus the weight of the edge we're currently considering, because that would be sort of our new distance. So the very first time that we encounter a vertex, old dist will be infinity and new dist will be, you know, whatever the current distance it took to get to the node I'm working off of right now. So me, the distance to me, you, plus the weight of this edge I'm considering traveling down. If the new distance is smaller than the old distance, then we replace the distance that's stored in that map and we lock in that uh, back pointer in the edge to map. So technically this sort of like act of like moving through and looking for shorter paths, it's called relaxing in case you ever hear that word come up. Um, but really the key here is that we are always going to select the closest unknown vertex to process. And I'm gonna talk about how you implement that, but because we make that choice, that greedy choice, then we know every time we sort of pull something off that we have actively found the shortest distance for that given vertex. Um, because by you know starting with the closest, we know we're not gonna later on find a shorter distance using the like further away distances. Okay, so 
Let's talk about runtime. I think it'll help us sort of get into more details here. So we've got that, you know, and let's utilize the whole disk tube. That's, you know, we're going to do it for each vertex. Um, and then we've got this while loop and we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, and then we've got this magic line that I keep referencing, let you be the closest unknown vertex. But then we add, you know, this current U to the set of known things. If we use a hash set, that's constant time, just throw it into the set. Uh, then we have this for loop that comes off of each, like that loop, so over each edge off of the vertex I'm currently processing. So if we had a situation where, you know, one vertex had literally every edge coming off of it, like a real hub or something like that, we would get a worst case of O of E. So this is going to run in terms of edge times. Then we've got this sort of like get the distances out, put the distances in, put the edge pointers in. And if we use a hash map for both of these items up here, then we know we're going to have a constant runtime. So the only thing missing is like, what the heck is going to be the runtime of this? And so let you be the closest unknown vertex. That line there was previously either the Q in the BFS implementation or the stack in the DFS implementation. But now what we're looking for is a data structure that is optimized to specifically give us the next smallest item. So we're going to use a heap min priority queue, just like the one you implemented in P3. And so make sure that you are leveraging that. That is going to dramatically uh, optimize this. And also it would be really difficult to sort of find this out otherwise. So now that we know uh, that we're gonna use a heap, um, heap min priority queue, Let's come back to this runtimes. So while there are unknown vertices, this while loop ultimately is going to crawl through all of the connected vertices. So we can think of this while loop as running in O of V time, just like BFS or DFS, it's just traveling through all of the connected vertices. Now, keep in mind, what that means is, is that Dijkstra's will just run to give you the shortest distance from your source to all of the other vertices, which means it could continue to iterate longer than you necessarily need it to. So in order to add an optimization in, you likely want to break or return or stop this algorithm in its tracks as soon as the target vertex is the thing that you pull out of the heap, because that's like the last thing to process. Then since we decided we're going to use a min priority queue and we're going to implement it with a heap, uh, remember that the runtime for remove min, which is what we're doing here on this line, we're removing the next min, is going to be log V because we've got that complete tree. We're guaranteed a height of log V. And this is just, of course, doing that remove min, pulling in the last item, and then percolating it down a singular path, which gives us that logarithmic runtime. Then we have all the other things we sort of talked about. Um, the only thing to, to keep in mind is that as we move through Dijkstra's, sometimes we find shorter paths as we continue to move through before we necessarily lock in our choice. And so that is actually why we had that change priority method that you implemented in the min priority queue, because this is an example of where you're going to use it. You're originally going to put these vertices into that um, min heap queue with their set of distances. But if you find a shorter distance, then you need to go in and update the priority so that you're sure that the min heap queue, <laughs> sorry, the heap min priority queue uh, is going to always serve up the next shortest distance associated vertex. So combining all together, you get a V log V plus E log V runtime. Remember that when you are finally asked to produce the shortest path, the way that you do so is once you've finished running all this Dijkstra's, you've got these assets, the edge two and the disk two set uh, maps there. And so what you can do then is you pull out the terminal vertex from the edge two and get 
the edge to that's associated with it. And then you just sort of continue to iterate from terminal vertex to the edge that precedes it, terminal vertex or like next vertex, the vertex, so on and so forth, sort of building up that path, one sort of edge two at a time. Hope that helps. Good luck with P4.